No, actually, hangovers aren't always that bad. I mean, if you, if you think if this time last year, probably we were thinking the hangover would be even worse. So actually, we've sort of, you know, we've gone through this year and the credits performed quite well. So looking at 2024, yeah, I mean, this is payback time, essentially, with high rates um, becoming restrictive in real terms. Um, so, you know, for us, it's all about, you know, companies focusing on, you know, cash flow, um, debt sustainability and debt service. I mean, that's what really needs to be the focus this year. Yeah, I thought there would be a big focus on the credit costs, and I can see that's in your report, but also right up there, geopolitical conflicts spilling yeah. over to Europe. Yeah. What's the potential for that? Well, I mean, for us, that's, that's still, you know, that's our higher risk, highest risk that we see in Europe um, looking forward, geopolitical risk. And, and obviously that's been amplified by the, the recent tragic events in, in, in Israel and, and Gaza. Um, but, but, but at the same time, at the moment, it's, it seems to be contained. Um, so we haven't seen spillover effects. And you look at oil price. I mean, I, could, I was surprised actually this morning after the attacks on the Red Sea um, yesterday that actually oil's down today if you look at Brent. So, so that's, sort of, that's obviously something we're watching very closely, but the spillovers could be quite significant if, if we saw escalation in the region. So it's on the radar when it comes to the geopolitics, but when it comes to that uh, boiling the frog type of uh, analogy that, yeah. that we've seen before in previous credit cycles, it feels that there's still a greater risk for corporates, you know, companies that have had fairly significant margin expansion in recent years, low credit costs for over a decade, yeah. now looking at a very different scenario. What does that look like as we wade through the next year or two? Yeah, well, actually, I mean, you're completely right. I mean, so, so the sectors, if you're looking at the, which sector is most affected by this, it's obviously the more capital intensive sectors, the more highly levered sectors. So, you know, investment grade, we think, is generally pretty, pretty sound, but real estate is obviously, you know, every, you know top of mind for everybody. Um, but then if you look at actually the more speculative grade, high leverage, more vulnerable companies, you know, that have yet to refinance, I mean, that's where the rubber's going to hit the road, actually, looking out. Because then ha now companies are really having to finance, uh, refinance 25 and 26 maturities um, as, we, as we sort of go through early part of 24 um, next year. Well, we were talking to a corporate a, a couple of weeks ago. He was saying, look, you know, we had a financing at about half of a percent. We're now high single digits. I mean, that is quite a turnaround, isn't it, from, yeah. from where they were? And that's probably an investment grade credit, right? right. So, 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 I mean, that's, you know, that's obviously, uh, I mean, but, Investment grade credits, they, can, they have the flexibility to, to manage that additional cost. But again, speculative grade companies have far fewer options. So they're looking at cost cutting um, and, and actually asset sales um, you know, in various ways, even equity raises where, where possible, just, just to, 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 to protect liquidity. If you've got companies selling, who are they selling to? Because well, you know, we've seen elements of it so far over this year where you've had companies that have had a resilient, stronger balance sheet opportunistically going back into the market in the same market that's not had a ton of M&A activity. How does next year look subtly different to that story? Well, I mean, it's a very good question. I mean, you know, there's a price for everything and, and, and there's a lot of, a lot of um, capital in the private markets. So, you know, so depending on what the, the asset is, um, you know, you, you might be able to find other, other sort of peers that actually might, might look for bolt-on acquisitions. That could be a, could be a strategy. But, um, but you're right, it's obviously a more difficult environment with higher high cost of funding. Now, the